COP27 has brought climate change experts and political leaders from across the globe to the Egyptian city of Sham El Sheikh. It's an annual conference that seeks to tackle the global phenomenon that has been ravaging countries that have had little to no responsibility, but most vulnerable to its risks and impacts. Things like extreme weather events, sea level rise, and loss of biodiversity, as well as land and forest degradation, are among the themes being discussed from a national, regional, and global perspective. It is very important that we move away from those cups where there's a lot of commitments, especially from these larger countries uh, who make commitments, but then it is difficult to get anything from them because it is not binding, especially in terms of finance. Mm -hmm. So COP27, even though it's also termed the African Cup, it is also termed the Implementation Cup. And we want to make sure that action is put into place. So that those commitments are action and then we can uh, move, for example, our commitments are through our NDCs. Mm -hmm. But for the NDCs to be effective, they also have to be implemented. For them to be implemented, we need funding. The Minister of Sustainable Development, Climate Change and Disaster Risk Management is the political leader heading the delegation. But who are these people tasked with the duty to defend Belize's position and ensure that as a country our voice is felt? They are referred to as negotiators, and among those lead negotiators are well-respected persons, including Ambassador Carlos Fuller and Janine Felson. We have um, the best people that we could have possibly brought, the technical staff that are looking at the different areas. Um, we have someone that's uh, looking at transparency, uh, not only for Belize, but for representing AOSIS. Somebody that's specifically looking at mitigation, another adaptation, one at loss and damage, agriculture. And so we also have uh, um, Ambassador Felsen, who is assisting Belize, but also CARICOM and AOSIS. We have Ambassador uh, Fuller, with all his experience also in meteorology and when he was at Five Seas, and he's uh, our lead negotiator here. My name is Adalmi Romero. I'm, I'm a forest officer from the forest department. Here at COP27, Idalmi Romero is more than a young female negotiator for Belize. She is the core negotiator for the Alliance of Small Island States under the transparency thematic area. The main focus that we bring from um, June is creating a draft that could reflect our needs. And um, here at COP is where we negotiate and our red line is, is to not extract out loss and damage. In, all the thematic areas. It's very important to keep it in because as you can see and also we had experience this past weeks um, a hurricane in Belize and the impact that the hurricane caused at category one is very important that we fight for that. We fight for, for loss and damage and also for adaptation because in our new reporting mechanism adaptation is one of the chapters that we need to enforce and also reflect on their transparency. Summit Betancourt is one of the youngest in the delegation but he is the negotiator for Article 6 of the Paris Agreement which focuses on the sale of carbon credits. The article also focuses on incentivizing countries like Belize that have been historically removing carbon emissions from the atmosphere. So where are those discussions? At COP26, uh, the, uh, the Paris Agreement rulebook was completed. The cooperative approaches and mechanisms overarching uh, decisions were completed for Article 6. And now at COP27, we're focusing on the fine details um, of each of the, the, the articles. So Article 6.2, we're discussing international registries, transfer of cert certified emission reduction, 6.4, the methodologies that will be accepted, and the credits that will now be transferred from the CDM from 2013 up to 2020, and transition into the 6.4 mechanism. And 6.8, we're, we're, figuring, we're figuring out capacity building work programs. Climate finance continues to be a touchy subject simply because the G7 countries have not been meeting their commitments to provide $100 billion to assist countries that have been impacted by the effects of climate change. Meet the Commonwealth National Climate Finance Advisor that is tasked with that. Finance is always a kind of a very important matter for developing countries including Belize. So we are working with other AOC small island members and uh, uh, the developing countries to make sure that we have um, 
uh, adequate amount of and predictable amount of finance to address climate change. Uh, so it's a, it's a kind of a long-term debate, but now we are we're focusing mainly on long-term finance uh, because there's a pledge that $100 billion will be available annually for developing countries uh, as climate finance. So now we are trying to have a new goal for 2025, by 2025, a kind of a common goal. So basically we are trying to enlarge the pot available. And we cannot exclude gender. Not in the sense of male and female, but the people of Belize, inclusive of the cultural diversity, indigenous peoples, youth, and the society on a whole, how we are impacted by climate change and how we adapt. Ida Sosa, the project assistant within the National Climate Change Office and project manager for the UNDP Climate Promise, has been here in Egypt for almost two weeks, making sure that Belize is not left out. There's a coordination happening between the technical uh, team for loss and damage and also the financial. Uh, and they're tabling in the part of AOSIS um, under SIDS. We're looking at the discussions on how we're going to be tabling that and then coming under the full group discussion and seeing how that can then be negotiated. Within Belize, we have a, gen a climate change gender action plan and we want to continue working along with human development with their gender policy um, and trying to ensure that climate changes and gender is mainstreamed um, across all sectors. Reporting for News 5 from COP27 in Sham El Sheikh, Egypt, I'm Dwayne Moody.